Chapter 15 Pressure Pattern Navigation Pressure Differential Techniques Pressure Differential Flying is based on a mathematically derived formula. The formula predicts wind flow based on the fact that air moves from a high pressure system to a low pressure system. This predicted wind flow, the geostrophic wind, is the basis for pressure navigation. The formula for the geostrophic wind, modified for a constant pressure surface, combined with in flight information, makes available two aids to navigation Bellamy drift and the pressure line of position, PLOP. Bellamy drift gives information about aircraft track by supplying net drift over a set period of time. Using the same basic information, the plot provides a line of position, LOP, as valid as any other type. Constant pressure surface To understand pressure differential navigation, you should know something about the constant pressure surface. The constant pressure surface is one on which the pressure is the same everywhere, even though its height above sea level will vary from point to point as shown in figure 15-1. The pressure altimeter will show a constant reading. A constant pressure surface is shown on a constant pressure chart. CPC as lines that connect points of equal height above sea level. These lines are referred to as contours and are analogous to contour lines on land maps. Figure 15-2, the intersection of altitude mean sea level, MSL, and constant pressure surfaces form isobars. A comparison of isobars and contours is shown in Figure 15-2. The geostrophic wind will blow along in parallel to the contours of a CPC just as it blows along in parallel to the isobars of a constant level chart. Geostrophic wind The shape and configuration of the constant pressure surface determine the velocity and direction of the geostrophic wind. Flying with 29.92 set in the pressure altimeter will cause the aircraft to follow a constant pressure surface and change its true height as the contours change. Figure 15-3, the slope of the pressure surface, also known as the pressure gradient, is the difference in pressure per unit of distance as shown in Figure 15-4. The pressure gradient force, PGF, or slope of the pressure surface, and Coriolis combined to produce the geostrophic wind. The speed of the geostrophic wind is proportional to the spacing of the contours or isobars. Closely spaced contours form a steep slope and produce a stronger wind, while widely spaced contours produce relatively weak winds. According to Bayes Ballot's law, if you stand in the northern hemisphere with your back to the wind, the lower pressure is to your left. Figure 15-5, the opposite is true in the southern hemisphere where Coriolis deflection is to the left. Further study of figure 15-5 shows that as you enter a low or a high system, your drift will be right or left, respectively. The opposite is true as you exit the system. Since the geostrophic wind is based on a constant pressure surface, you must fly a constant pressure altitude. A minimum of 2,000 to 3,000 feet above the surface will usually eliminate distortion introduced through surface friction. Near the equator, 20 degrees N to 20 degrees south, Coriolis force approaches zero and pressure navigation is unreliable, pressure differential navigation is reliable in mid-latitudes. Pressure computations and plotting in determining a plop or Bellamy drift by pressure differential techniques, use the crosswind component of the geostrophic wind over a given period of time. To determine your pressure pattern displacement, Zn, use the following equation, K, D2, D1, Zn equals 8 as this formula gives the direction and crosswind displacement effect of the pressure system you've flown through. To solve for Zn, you must understand how to obtain and apply such special factors as D readings, effective true airspeed, ETAS, effective air path, EAP, effective air distance, EAD, and K values. D readings The symbol D stands for the difference between the true altitude, TA, of the aircraft and the pressure altitude, PA, of the aircraft. There are two methods for obtaining D values. The first uses an absolute altimeter to measure TA on overwater flights and the pressure altimeter to measure PA. The second method uses outside air temperature, OAT, readings to determine equivalent D values if the absolute altimeter fails. For both methods, the D value is expressed in feet as A plus, plus, or minus, dash value. To determine the correct D reading using the altimeter method, assign A plus, plus, to TA, a minus, dash, to PA, and algebraically add the two. Remember the city in Florida, Tampa, to keep the signs right. Take the first D reading in conjunction with the initial fix for the pressure navigation leg. This is D1. Take the second reading D2 at the next fix. Always take the readings at the same time relative to the fix, usually about 4 minutes before fix time. The value D2, D1, is an expression of the slope or pressure gradient experienced by the aircraft. Subtracting D1 from D2 determines the change in aircraft TA between readings. When this altitude change is compared with the distance flown, the resulting value becomes an expression of the slope. The value of D2, D1 indicates whether the aircraft has been flying upslope, 
plus, or downslope. Take readings carefully, because an erroneous reading of either altimeter will produce an incorrect D reading and a bad lob. Gently tap the pressure altimeter before reading it to reduce hysteresis error. Maintain a constant PA to ensure consistent D readings. If you change altitudes, start with a new D at the new altitude, or correct the previous reading by use of a postogram. The postogram will allow you to continue accurately, even though you have changed altitude. The postogram uses average altitude and average temperature change to determine a correction to the D reading taken before the altitude change. Figure 15-6 shows a postogram with instructions for its use and a sample problem. Effective true airspeed, ETAS, to determine a plop, you must compute the ETAs from the last D reading. The ETAs is the TAS that the aircraft flew from the last fix to the next fix air position. Figure 15-7, if the aircraft has maintained a constant true heading, TH, between D readings, the ETAs equals the average TAS. But, if the aircraft has altered heading substantially between the D readings, the effective TAS is derived by drawing a straight line from the fix at the first D reading to the final air position. This line is called the effective air path, EAP. ETAs is computed by measuring the effective air distance, EAD, and dividing it by the elapsed time. In figure 15-7, an aircraft flew at 400 knots TAS from the 0820 fix to the 1020 air position via a dogleg route. The ETA is 516 nautical miles, NM, consequently, the ETA is 258 knots. K factor the constant K takes into account Coriolis and the gravity constant for particular latitudes. K equals 21.49 sin mid latitude mid latitude is the average latitude between D1 and D2. It is in tabular form in figure 15.8. In the table, this constant is plotted against latitude since Coriolis force varies with latitude. In using the ZN formula, enter the table with mid latitude and extract the corresponding K factor. On MB4 computers, a subscale of latitude appears opposite the values for K factors on the minute scale. K is computed so that with slope expressed in feet and distance in NM, the geostrophic wind speed is in knots. For training purposes only, the K factors for 20 degrees north or S to 14 degrees north or S are listed in figure 15-9. Crosswind displacement ZN is the displacement from the straight line air path between the readings. Therefore, a plot must be drawn parallel to the effective air path. With all the necessary values available, the ZN formula can be rearranged for convenient solution on the doctor computer as follows, equals D2, D1 ZN K8 is printed instructions on the face of MB4 computers specify that to compute crosswind component, set E on the minute scale opposite D2, D1 on the miles scale. The crosswind component V is not to be confused with ZN. The V is crosswind velocity in knots. V must then be multiplied by the elapsed time between D2 and D1 in order to compute the ZN. Substitute it is for eat on the MB4 computer, and read the ZN over the K factor, or latitude on the subscale. Pressure line of position, PLOP, after you determine ZN, you need to figure out whether to plot it left or right of the EAP. Recall that wind circulation is clockwise around a high and counterclockwise around a low in the northern hemisphere, the opposite is true in the southern hemisphere. In the northern hemisphere, when the value of D increases, a positive D2, D1, the aircraft is flying into an area of higher pressure and the drift is left. Figure 1510A, when the value of D decreases, a negative. D2, D1, the aircraft is flying into an area of lower pressure and the drift is right. Figure 1510B, use the memory device plop to remember plot left on positive, in the northern hemisphere, always plot the plot parallel to the EAP, as shown in figure 1511. Cross the plop with another lop to form a fix, or use it with a doctor position to construct an MPP. Bellamy Drift Bellamy Drift is a mean drift angle calculated for a past period of time. It is named for Dr. John Bellamy who first demonstrated that drift could be obtained from the use of pressure differential information. Bellamy Drift is used in the same way as any other drift reading. An advantage of Bellamy Drift is its independence from external sources. It can serve as a backup if the primary drift source fails, but will not give ground speed. Bellamy Drift is less accurate than Doppler or INS-derived sources, but is better than using forecast drift or having none at all. In figure 1512, a plop has been plotted from the following information, D1 at a fix at 1000 hours D2 at an air position at 1045 hours ZN equals minus 20 nautical miles constant TH of 90 degrees next, construct an MPP on the plop. This is done by swinging the arc, with a radius equal to the ground distance traveled, from the fix at the first D reading to intersect the plop. The ground distance traveled can be found by multiplying the best known ground speed, ground speed by timing, metro ground speed, etc. by the time interval between readings. 
The mean track is shown by the line joining D1 and the MPP. The mean drift is the angle between true heading and the mean track, 8 degrees Rankin. Thus, the Bellamy drift is 8 degrees right. MB4 solution of Bellamy drift compute Bellamy drift on the slide rule side of the doctor computer by placing the ZN over the ground distance and reading the Bellamy drift angle opposite 57.3. Figures 15 to 13 and 15 to 14. This can be set up in a formula as follows, Z and Bellamy drift equals 57.3 ground distance, and M. 0 0 0, S S S R R R E E E T T T 7 7 7 A A S S S P P P L L L S S S S S S A A A T T T O O O E E U U U L L L S S S S S S R R R V V V R R R C C C E E E A A A T T T T A A A T T T U U U L L L E A E A E A U U U Limitations of pressure differential techniques Pressure navigation is limited by a few meteorological considerations. The basic accuracy of the LOP in average conditions is about 5 to 10 miles. It will rapidly become worse under the following conditions, tightly circulating pressure systems of highs and lows, flying through a front, or carelessness in reading or computing the information. Bellamy drift has another limitation. To determine drift you must stay on one heading long enough to take two readings about 20 minutes apart. Zn is a displacement in Nm perpendicular to the EAP. Compute Zn on the MB4 using the equation. Determine Eta's by using the Eden time. Measure Eta along a straight line between the two points in question. In the northern and southern hemispheres, the sign of the Zn is the sign of the drift correction. Use air plot in conjunction with a fixed position to plot the plot, and plot it parallel to the EAP. If the absolute altimeter fails, use pressure by temperature as a backup. With this method, use temperature and pressure altitude to find equivalent D readings. If you change altitudes, restart pressure at the new altitude, or correct the last D reading prior to the altitude change with a postogram. Another expression of the plop is Bellamy drift, used as a backup source of drift angle. Figure 1515 shows a fix determined by a plop and a celestial lob. Chapter Summary This chapter discussed pressure differential techniques and how they affect pressure pattern navigation. Topics, such as constant pressure surface, geostophic wind, pressure computations and plotting, D readings, effective true airspeed, K factor, pressure line of position, Bellamy drift, and the MB4 solution of Bellamy drift are all discussed. Also explained are the limitations of pressure differential techniques and how they are affected by meteorological conditions.